Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rizet with BuildBox. In this video, we're going over part two of how to make a spin shooter game. And let's go ahead and preview what we've got so far. So this is the setup that we currently have. We have a character on a platform with some walls around it. And then when you touch the screen, the character spins, and so does the camera. So all we need to do is add some bullets, some enemies, a score label, and then we're good to go. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna exit out of my preview right now. And we're gonna go ahead and add in a couple things. So the first thing I need to add in is a special bullet. And so I've created this special bullet asset that I'll share with you in the description of this video below. You'll be able to download this. I'm going to go ahead and just drop this in here. So I've got this bullet set up and then I've also added a whole bunch of code to the character. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop that in right now as well. And I'm going to replace this roto shooter uh, with the one that I just dropped in. So it's going to disappear from the scene. I'm going to drag this one back in. I'll scale it back down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 make it half the size, and then we'll be right back where we were. And I also am going to change the color as well so that we get that pink color real fast. You can change that real, real fast. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command S and I'm gonna save. And I'm going to show you what this looks like now that we've added in the special roto shooter and the bullet. And then I'm going to go over some of the code there that makes that work. So now we have this character that is shooting bullets and then it scales down at the very, very end. And then it removes the bullet so that it's not taking up space in the memory and it's going to perform well on a phone or a device. So I'm going to exit out of preview here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the code and what's making this work. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at at the bullet okay so the things that I added to the bullet are these two little delays here and then a scale animation and then a remove the bullet so this delay allows the bullet to last 0.4 seconds and then it starts scaling down into nothing and then the end scale is zero 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 and then there's also a delay and it removes the bullet completely so it's not taking up space now one special thing with this bullet is we added some special code to this move node so the special code is right here and then we got rid of this other else if statement uh, over here you can see See, I can show you a picture of the actual movement node and you can see the difference. So let's go ahead and let's take a screenshot of this. Do that real fast. And then we'll also take a look at this one. So here is the code that we have currently. I'm going to get rid of this old move node, the original. This is the adaptation that we made. And then here is a screenshot of the one that we have currently. So you'll see that we commented out this speed attribute first because we're going to send in a signal for speed from our roto shooter BB asset and we're going to send it through our spawner node and what it's going to do is it's going to send in the value for speed here and then that value for speed is now going to fill in for here for the x y and z so we're going to send in a vector normally it just sends in a boolean if the if the node is hooked up so if this is enabled it's going to go ahead and perform the regular move node but what we want to do is we want this bullet to rotate around and shoot with our character as the character rotates we want the bullet to rotate as around as well so we have to send in this rotation value to accommodate for that so that's the big th thing here and then we also got rid of this else if or this else statement right here because it was unnecessary okay so that was all of the code differences there you can pause the video and take a look at that if you want uh, you can see the the differences now let's take a look at the roto shooter node map so I'm gonna go back to my 3d world I'm gonna select my roto shooter and then I'm gonna just briefly go over all of this so these are the different enemies that you're gonna collide with and they're going to defeat the character there's going to be an explosion animation that plays and there's going to be a short delay so that you can actually watch the explosion animation happen and then there's the event observer so there's also some major changes that I made to the the spawn node over here so if you go over here to actions and you select spawn node you can see here let's we'll take a quick look at the code um, you can see here's the original code and it's pretty simple it just spawns an asset for you so what I wanted to do is I wanted to spawn a bullet but 
but I wanted to spawn a bullet over and over and over again. And so I, what I did is I wrote some code and I got a little bit of help from Nick Rodenko on this one again. Um, and I was able to spawn a bullet and also rotate the bullet around and change the direction as the character rotates. So what I did is I add some variables up here at the top I created some attributes over here and I assigned those attributes here to the variables over here that I created. And then I set up a counter so that you can choose your spawn rate. So once the counter gets over the spawn rate, then it's going to spawn again. And so every single time it, it does this, uh, it's going to spawn. So every 0.3 seconds. So if you have a spawn rate set to one, it's gonna spawn every one second. All right, if you want it to go sp uh, faster than that, you just do a smaller number. All right, and then this is the speed that which the bullet is going to fly. And so you can set that here as well. And what it does is it just creates this entity here in the scene. And then this is the really, this is the cool part though. This is what happens with the move node. You're letting a component here, you're setting this component variable to the entity's uh, component move. So when we're creating the entity asset name and it's the bullet that we create, Created. When we create that bullet, we're going to assign this variable to that bullet's component named move. Okay, so we have this move node in bullet, and we're going to change around some of the attributes or some of the uh, variables in uh, that move node. So we're going to send a new speed, all right? And so we're going to calculate the speed here based on the rotation of the character. And then we're going to create that new vector here, and we're going to set the vector according to our character's rotation, which was uh, figured out. You, right now, the angle is set to degrees, but you need to change it to radians. And so you want to multiply by pi over 180. This is just like a simple conversion in math. And then you calculate the x and the z rotation using sine and cosine of that angle. And then you multiply by the speed, depending on how, how fast you want the bullet to fly. So once you have that vector figured out, then you can pass in that vector in for the speed variable and that's going to send it's going to send a signal it's the name of it's going to be speed and it's going to pass in the value of that vector the value the value that's being passed through is this x zero and z rotation because we don't really care about the rotation in the y because we're only spinning left and right so we go over here to our bullet node and so it's going to take that speed uh, see if it's it's checking for signals right this function signal checks for a signal being passed in and so we're sending in that speed signal that we're talking about in the roto shooter and it's going to change the speed variable to the value that we're passing in and the value that we're passing in is that vector it's the it's the new uh, it's the new rotation and the new speed for uh, for the bullet and so that's what that's what does it. So it's it's a little complicated, okay? I'm not saying that it's super super easy, but um, you don't ever have to code this now yourself, okay? You can just take my code and you and, and Nick helped me out with this section right here. I was I was having problems with with this, but you can take this now and you can totally use this for all of your games, and you do not have to touch the code if you don't want to. I'm just saying I wanted to explain it for you just in case you wanted to know. So we got this character spinning and shooting bullets, all okay? right? And so that's what that spawner node is doing. That's what that special move node is doing for the bullet. So there's a couple moving parts here, but that's what's making it work. Now, I don't want this video to get too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut ahead to where I've got the BB doc already finished. I'm gonna briefly go over it, and then I'm gonna give it to you. So let's go ahead and let's take a peek at what this BB doc looks like once it's finished. Okay, so this is what the finished product looks like. I changed a few things around I changed some colors around and I definitely added in some enemies and some spawners so let's go ahead and take a look at what I added so first I added this list of enemies from 1 to 8 okay and what these do is these enemies all go in different directions okay I have them placed in the corners here or I have them coming from all the different corners and the sides so I'll get I'll go ahead and delete some of these walls so you can see this what these are these little white squares that are over here on the sides and in the corners these are my spawners and so what they do is spawner one spawns enemy one 
here and that's going to have a certain motion so spawner one is over here and that enemy only goes this direction and then I have a decoration here that I'm using so I have it as a child of the camera so that when you play this game you can see that you've got this enemy over in the top left corner and that never moves even though you rotate the camera around that just stays the same okay so let me go ahead and exit out of that and so it's it's pretty basic I have I added the round debris so that when you defeat one of the spike characters you see like little balls go flying and then the same thing with cube debris this is for the explosion animations here so if I go to my rotor shooter and I check out my explosion animation I'm using the cube debris for the explosion animation and it's the same thing with the round debris on these enemy explosion animations we use the round debris and then it goes flying every Everywhere. Okay, cool. So this is pretty much it. I'll go ahead and hit Control Z here and bring the walls back. And then I'm going to give you this BB doc for you to all use and play around with. And I hope that this inspires you to maybe try out some other ideas. Uh, one really cool thing that I kind of want to just sh uh, show you guys right now, uh, for those of you who stuck it out and watched the rest of this video, one really cool idea that I'd really like to see somebody do is uh, build out. Okay, so I built out another scene and then I got rid of these walls and then let's get rid of these spawners right now just for this example all right and then you take this roto shooter and you add in this little movement node so it'd be really cool to have this character have not only be able to spin around and shoot but also move along in a direction and have a bunch of objects flying at it so this is kind of a cool game mechanic that I'd love to see somebody build out a new game with that so just take all you have to do take the roto shooter built out that scene just uh, like I showed you add this little move node and then you're good to go you can start doing a whole bunch with that and start messing around with that so I hope you thought this video was useful keep an eye out for more videos to come and as always, keep on boxing.